We've all heard about the idea of adding term limits for Congress. Our next guest is actually doing something about it, getting a lot of exercise and raising awareness about the issue. Tim Izzy Israel has been walking across the country to help raise awareness about this issue. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So first of all, tell us, why did you get interested in this issue of term limits? I'm um, talking with a childhood friend of mine. I would visit where I grew up maybe once every two years, and we would always make a point to have a fire and talk about what we saw wrong. And that's what we came up with every time, that it was the legislative branch's capability of making laws to legislate for an indefinite period of time. Um, and then in early 2020, I saw a video of uh, Nick Tombalides that uh, he was talking to the Senate in 2019 and his, his st statistics and just the way he approached everything factually steamed me up enough to where I was like, okay, I'm going to do something. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I was going to do something, you know, one time. Yeah, so you definitely could write an op-ed, send a letter to the editor, call into talk show hosts or something like that. Tell us what you decided to do instead and how it's raising awareness. Well, he and I came up with the idea and called it Land Limits for Term Limits. Um, and and uh, thanks to him, it started at Key West, <laughs> the southeastmost point, going to Cape Flattery, Washington State. And I figured I didn't know anybody politically. I'm not a big vocal person. And I figured if I, if I walked the country, it might gain enough attention to cause people to take a look at this issue. Um, so that's pretty much was the the whole deal of it was just to walk and see if people were going, hey, what are you doing this for? And that's the most important thing is what I'm doing it for. It's not really about me because we all can change this. Yeah, so you are walking. Tell us uh, tell us what you've done so far. Well, I, I walked to Tallahassee and got a little media coverage. That's about 650 miles. Um, then I went on to Ozark, Alabama, which is 800 miles. And then I took a break over in southwest Georgia. My friends came and got me. My foot was giving me trouble, my left foot. And then I met U.S. term limits. They saw the footage in Tallahassee um, and sent Byron Sheehy, the Alabama representative. He came and met me, and we went to lunch. And um, they started talking to me about sending a guy out with a van. And there's Jeff, and I don't have to worry about where I'm sleeping every night. A couple of nights budgeted for a hotel, and they're feeding me. So it's a joint effort between my little entity and you know their big entity and i hope i can help all i can to raise awareness for this this need i'm just grateful that i can do it yeah so uh tell us when you started and how much ground you've already said you started in florida you've been to alabama and uh, you're kind of making your way you're now in north carolina all right so um ozark alabama was 800 miles and then jeff came and then that's when i started doing like sporadic media stuff but my whole trip was that I always go back to where I started or where I left off so I made a thousand miles to the Mississippi line right uh, seven miles from Columbus Mississippi uh, coming out of Tuscaloosa on 82 then US term limits took me away well, I had a small break at home uh, I hadn't been home since December 22nd that's where I started um, and I uh, then came back and walked from the south part, Tennessee, Alabama line, to Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And then we took another break. Thank, thank goodness Jeff ha has things still breaking at his house in Michigan. <laughs> I, was, I was telling him, I've got some people up there. I know where you live, so just <laughs> keep messing with the stuff, and his wife will make him come back home, and then I get a break, too. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, So then um, uh, we started at the... Uh, south carolina north carolina border and if they don't have anything crucial for me when i get to the virginia line then they will return me to the mississippi border okay. uh, to to continue my stair step to cape flattery so that walk will always be there now i understand there's an interesting story about your first night out there walking and someone uh, in particular helping you tell us about that well, my, my whole goal, I got a late start, was to get off the island. Um, you know, that was it, just get off Key West. 
and uh earlier in the night there was a guy laying on the sidewalk um and he was just getting up and he, you know it was your typical even though there's no one typical everyone is special he, typical out of his mind kind of shaky you know intimidating homeless person and so i just you know went around him uh and he he bummed a cigarette off me so i gave him a couple and then um i moved on and I got off the island, and it's probably about midnight, and I'm starting to think about, okay, where can I hide and get some sleep? And this guy caught up with me. I turned around, and I'm like, oh, no. Here. He's like, what are you doing? And I was like, well, I'm going to try to find a place to sleep. And he goes, come on down here, man, in the mangroves. He goes, I got a place. And he had a little encampment down there, and he knew the names of every fish because it was right by the water. And he showed me all the, all his fish. He called it his aquarium the next morning. Um, it was getting close to Christmas. Um, I let him use my cell phone to call his brother in Dallas. It was a short phone call. I don't know if it was wanted necessarily, but he was able to tell his brother, you know, that he loved him. And, of course, I'm kind of worried about getting ripped off. But, you know, I woke up the next morning. The first thing he said was, good morning. And he made me a cup of coffee in a instant pack of coffee in a, in a Campbell soup can and he wanted me to stick around but I told him I had to go and he was a vet and I saw a VA facility back on Key West and I, I told him I would pause and if there's anything I would go back with him if he if if I could help him at all and he's like no nope, I'm, I'm happy the way I am and his name was Willie Sanders so never forget that well very good and uh, you, you mentioned that you're, you're raising awareness, but also you're talking to people as you're doing this. What sorts of things have people said to you about about this issue that you're interested in? Do they say, hey, right on, keep at this? What What's the message? That's all they say is right on. I've not met one person out there that once they figure out what I'm doing or ask me what I'm doing, that, that they don't feel the same way, that this is a major, major flaw in our governmental system. That has to be helpful in keeping you going. It it, it is, yeah. yeah. So uh, you mentioned that the the man you ran into was a vet. You, you were a vet yourself. How does that factor into this? Do you do you say, hey, you know, people like me who help defend our country, we want to see it continue in in a way that would be better once we had term limits. Sure, sure. I mean, I I almost feel more patriotic doing this than than when I did uh, serve. So. I don't know how to describe it. What is your hope for uh, how this will proceed in the future? You, you mentioned that you've got some some particular stops that are that are planned, and you have an ultimate goal. Do you hope that you're going to be seeing lots of people along the way, and that you'll get other people inspired to deal yes. with term limits? Yes, I hope it spreads out like a spider web, and it really doesn't take a lot, and, and you don't need to feel like you're your point doesn't get across even if you haven't voted in your life or gone through periods of time where you didn't vote you can find your representatives in your district and your your house people and your senate of your state and reach out to them you know daily weekly and tell them this is what you want because the state legislatures can term limit congress they can they can set the number of times someone can be elected to make laws the states can do it now, I understand, speaking of legislatures, you have had a chance to meet with some legislators about this. Yes. Yeah, it was, it was pretty pretty wild. I never expected to meet them, or at least not this quickly in my journey. What kind of response have you had? Uh, the, just really, really nice. Um, Representative Sparks in Murfreesboro uh, came out and walked with me a little bit. Uh, spent some time at a campground with Jeff and I. Um, and then uh, Tim Moore uh, met met jeff and i in in shelby at red bridges barbecue loft lodge and uh took us out to barbecue and was there waiting when i walked up so i mean that that's camaraderie or that's single issue determination you know and it gives me hope that no one's trying to take the power away you just there's no one that moral that they should be able to make laws for a lifetime so we've been talking about your your the, the general point of your your cause specifically now you're interested in seeing if the senate will take some action because the u.s house is, has addressed this 
that's it that's yeah. great yeah so uh if people want to learn more about this obviously most people who hear this are not going to see you out there walking but they might be able to find out more should they go to the term limits website or is there other place to go uh, term limits is a great uh, place to go for information uh, on my little website uh, you can go to where is izzy.com i also have links to where you can understand or find out who your senators are you can even an interesting thing i did that made me kind of sick to my stomach was look up just 10 senators and within the first 10 the net worth of somebody from virginia i think was over a quarter of a billion dollars and most of the rest were millionaires as public servants that took an oath for an office it's not like a normal job i guess that's part of the reason why it's been gotten away with so long is because oath has something to do with divine if you look up the definition of oath and an oath is invisible because it's up to the person that says the words and you hope that what's going on in their mind that they mean it you know so it's like a hope or faith or music is invisible an oath is and i feel like that they're the they're allowing uh, the offices that they hold to be trashed with that oath. Well, you have been listening to Tim Izzy Israel, and it sounds as if if you want to know where he is on this term limits walk, you can go to whereisizzy.com. Is that right? That's it.